Welcome back, Cracked fans, to another edition of the Cracked Interviews Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Gruskin. As you can see, the professional tennis season has wound down. There is not much left to cover on that note. And, of course, we will get into recapping 2019, uh, previewing 2020 in the month to come. But you listeners know one thing that is everlasting throughout the tennis season, college tennis. One of our favorite things to discuss at Cracked Rackets to get you listeners ready for the 2020 dual match season. And we have started our College Contenders series, previewing the last season's top 10 ranked teams to end the year, talking about them in order, talking about which teams are on the rise, which teams may see a drop off from next year. Just again, all of these things to help get you ready for what should be a phenomenal 2020 season. And that is why I am so thrilled to bring on today's guest. Now entering, I believe, his 27th year as the head coach of the UNC Men's Tennis Tar Heels. Coach Coach Sam Paul, welcome to the Cracked Interviews podcast. Uh, thank you, Alex. Great to be here. Oh, it is such a thrill for me to have you here. 27 years, Coach. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, in my 31st year, I believe, overall. So I've been uh, extremely fortunate, you know, to be at North Carolina that long. Does Chapel Hill ever lose its shine? Because it really is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, it keeps shining more and more and more. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a neat place. You know, it's a, it's a college town. You know, I think there's always been something really special about North Carolina and certainly the students that go here. Uh, it's a very unique town and, um, you know, uh, we think it's one of the best places in the, in the world to live. Absolutely. And there's an obvious reason why they've kept you around so long. The Tar Heels program continuing its ascent. Obviously it comes to a peak in that 2017 season when you guys make the first, uh, team title appearance of first finalists for your team's program history. But for you guys, uh, just in general, coming into this season, uh, which is what I want to really talk about today, uh, for you, Coach, you bring back a lot of talent. And I'm curious, I know you've obviously been doing it a while, but how how do you approach a season when you have a team where you're returning, what, five starters? And yes, you lose Bo Boyden, but you have a guy in Rinky coming in who obviously has had a fantastic fall. Does that change your approach to the way you had towards a dual season um I, th- I think one thing is that to, to you know that we've tried to instill in the guys is that you know there are a number of really good teams out there so um that's great that we have talent but it's really going to be how hard we work and um we've tried to set that in motion this fall but you know how, how bad do we want to compete and how hard do we want to work and so that's sort of the theme for the season you know and then uh we'll try to control everything we possibly can to control yeah, and for you in terms of getting your team to work, does it help to have the ending that you guys did last year? You come in uh, as a non-top eight seed, so you have to travel to USC for your quarterfinal for the first time. You get a win there. You beat an Ohio State team and make the semifinals after not necessarily a down year, but certainly a year that may not have gone to schedule through the regular season. Does it help when you have that strong of an ending to get the guys motivated throughout the summer? Oh, I think so. Obviously, success builds on success, and I think it uh, just makes your guys hungry to do better and to train harder. So, yes. And for you guys, that experience, I'm curious, you got to go to USC for the round of 16. What did you think about that change in format? Um, Obviously, I'm sure it adjusted your preparations, but did you like that aspect? Maybe you preferred the round of 16 all being in one place? Um, You know, again, I've been doing this for a long time, so... Uh, you know, I, I've always enjoyed going to the round of 16. I think it brings a certain, you know, with all the teams there, it was done in the past. Uh, it was pretty exciting to, for everyone to be there. Um, but obviously I, at the time, you know, we weren't super happy about going all the way across the country to play at Southern Cal. And obviously, and then uh, we were able to have one of the biggest wins in our program's history. So, uh, you know, they were incredible hosts. It was a great day. And so that was a memory that I think uh, that everyone will share. We had some great alumni, um, they came to watch us play. You know, Joe Frierson flew all the way across the country. Thomas Tanner, who lives there, I mean, I'll never forget. Brendan Boyage and those guys being there for us and our team. And so uh, Connor Daly, it, just, it was a very neat thing for all of us. And will that make chasing a top eight seed this year that much more important? You want to play that match in Chapel Hill? Uh, we'd love to. But, again, I think <laughs> uh, we want to be make sure that we're just playing our best tennis when it comes around to May. You know, so, um, you know, we've got um, – to find this team, this team has to find its own way as every team has to. Uh, again, we're really excited for the spring, but 
that would be great. You know, certainly we'd, we'd love to be a top, you know, eight seed, but we just want to be playing our best tennis when that time of year comes around. And for you guys, making sure you're playing your best tennis, at least for the past three years, uh, so often that revolves around, and there's a lot of guys, but, you know, UNC tennis the past three years has been synonymous with Will Blumberg, who has been, you know, through his first three years, one of the best performers college tennis has ever seen. He sets the year, uh, the season on fire his freshman year by, you know, I think maybe losing one match all season long, making that NCAA finals in singles, as well as playing so well throughout the dual match season. Um, But last year was a struggle for him. He struggled with injuries. I know that's something that's been constantly nagging him, and, you know, having him healthy in May will obviously obviously be so important for your team. Uh, Given that he's a senior coach, given, you know, he's got a lot of miles on his body, how do you approach that this season for Will, uh, monitoring, A, what he wants to do maybe after college tennis, but as well as keeping all of those health concerns in mind? Yeah, I think, um, you know, last year for Will was a really you know, frustrating year. I think we had two surgeries in 10 months, but, you know, he's now through all of that and he's now very healthy as I'm not going wood. So I'm sitting here. Um, so he's training very hard and, 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 you know, I think, um, you know, we're not having to monitor anything a little bit differently for him, you know, um, cause I think he's really healthy right now and he's ready to go and he's been training hard. And so he's healthy, you know, so I think it'd be great for him. It was amazing the job that he did for us last year, Um, you know, he went into some matches at the end of the year and he only had, you know, he'd be off for two weeks and then go in and have one day of a 30 minute hit and then go play a match, you know, in a very competitive match. So it's incredible. You know, I think it's incredible what he did just to get to the point that he did. And again, he's such a team player that he kept wanting to play for the team and, and he was really hurt. Um, and I, and again, that had to be followed up with a surgery. So, um, We'll certainly monitor him and monitor him every day, just like we do, you know, all of our guys, if they're healthy or if they're not healthy. But, again, you know, we're looking forward to having, you know, having him have a healthy season and all to his professional career. Yeah, for one of the highlights for me last year, I had the chance to go to Chicago for the indoors. And even though Will lost two three-set matches to Alex Rybakov and Borna Gojo, two of the top players in the country last year against TCU and Wake Forest, him being able to even fight for three sets, I mean, you could see from the body language from the rest of your team how they responded. Obviously, you guys made the semifinals last year as a number eight seed that takes uh, you know, it takes gumption and it showed at NCAAs as well when you guys knocked off Ohio State, made the semifinals again. And so, you know, it's great to have Will up there, but the reason you're able to do that, obviously, such great depth in your lineup. And, you know, from Ben, Josh, Brian, uh, all of these guys you're bringing back, um, what have you seen from them this fall that, you know, have, have you seen these guys take a step forward? Because a lot of them now have a lot of college tennis under their belt. Yeah, I think we had a, a sort of a slow start to the fall, but then they continued to get better all the way through the fall. You know, Josh uh, semifinaled at our regionals, um, had a uh, good All-American first round, and then lost to a really good player from, you know, Soto from Baylor, um, second second round. So, again, he's playing some of the best tennis he's played. And then uh, Brian started out a little bit slow, and then he came in and had a great, you know, tournament, a professional tournament, and had some really good wins down there. So those guys have trained hard. And again, and we sort of wish the season was sort of going right now. You know, now, you know, we're sort of shut down in exam periods right now. But um, you know, we're ready. To, we're ready to get started. So, and obviously, Mac and you know, I don't, you know, Mac and Simon had a tremendous fall for us in doubles, um, where they, you know, won the regional and then made semifinals of the nationals. Um, and so, they've had a really good fall too. So, we're really happy where we are. You mentioned some of the pro results. We've seen a guy like Ben Seguin go out and play, you know, make a couple round of 16s at Challengers. Obviously, Will, uh, we've seen him do so much before. But do you enjoy seeing your players go out there on the pro circuit in between time? Uh, Rinky's obviously had a great fall as well on the pro circuit. Um, is that an, an avenue you like your players to explore to get ready for the dual match season? Well, I think it's, 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 it's uh, you know, for both, for their growth as a player, you know, overall as a player. And this is obviously something that they, you know, want to do once they leave college, right? So I think, you know, that's the number that, that's important for them. And obviously the more experience they can get and the more talented they are, I think it's great. So then for them to play professional matches, it, it's tremendous for them because that's where they gain their confidence. 
So we talked about Will and, you know, how important he will be to your team, but it's a bunch of other returners as well. It's Ben, it's Josh, who's a senior, it's Brian, it's Simon. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about, again, your roster, that depth, and how important that will be to your team? Uh, Yeah, well, look at, uh, you know, talk about Ben Sagoin, you know, um, you know, he was an All-American for us last year, had a great tournament in singles and doubles. So he's a really key factor for us, too. He went on and had a tremendous summer this summer. You know, I think you mentioned earlier about talking about some professional tennis results. But, you know, uh, Ben had a win over Polanski, I think, at the time. He was ranked 147 in the world. Um, he split with J.C. Aragon. So, and, and I think he's like around the 200. So, again, you know, Ben is a, a really key factor, and he did an incredible job for us last year. And then, um, uh, you know, one person that's really a sort of an unsung hero for us hasn't seen any playing time, but is Lad Harrison from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, he's, you know, we only had eight guys on our team last year, and he's one of the most unselfish young men that we've ever had in our program. And um, he's a very good player, and obviously we have a tremendous depth on our team, but his leadership, you know, off the court uh, has been invaluable to us. And he'll do anything for our team to be successful. So, you know, it's great that he's, you know, he's going into his senior spring and, and um, you know, and he c- continues to be a tremendous leader for us. And it's obviously with Simon's worked really hard. He had a great summer um, and, and worked extremely hard for us all summer. And then Matt Kiger's had a really good fall too. You know, he's a junior. And then obviously, you know, Josh. So the, you know, the senior leadership of Will, Simon, Ladd, um, and Josh is very important to us, and that's something that's uh, always been important to us because I think, you know, as we move forward and great teams have great leadership. Yeah, I'm curious for this. is Because you have so many guys who contribute and it's a long dual match season, is making sure there's time in the schedule for all of them to, you know, get a dual match under their belt or rotate between different positions, is that something you'll factor in as you're making lineups throughout the season? I think, you know, I think, uh, you know as we go through the season this year, certainly – you know, one is, is the health of our team, you know, so again, you know, how health, healthy we are, you know, um, and then we also have, you know, a news with Tani as a freshman for us, unfortunately got hurt this fall, um, you know, and then Rinky obviously had a tremendous fall, you know, and having some, some really great success and, and the, both those guys bring great energy to our team just overall because they're so motivated to do so well in their tennis and, and uh, you know, obviously Rinky's had tr- some tremendous results. So, um, you know, that's very important, you know, and then again, you know, Brian Sarnock, you know, um, who was, uh, you know, all tournament team last year in singles and in doubles, you know, he had a great run and he's, you know, really had some, a great month of getting better here this last month. We're starting to see some really you know, great things for him. So again, it's going to be challenging to make the lineup for our team and where's everybody going to play. That's a great, uh, it's a great problem to have as a head coach. Absolutely. I feel like in doubles, you should just play Simon and Josh together and then just like arm to arm, they're connecting, they cover the whole net. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's, right? that's that, just, uh, they're actually roommates. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, they're great friends, so they, they, well, I'll, I'll run that by them. So. Yeah, I feel like that's how it works, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and you mentioned doubles as well uh, for the fall. I know that's really the big thing. You lose a guy like Bo. Now Will finds has to find a new partner. I know Ben, Brian, uh, Mac, they all fill, were in the doubles lineup in various roles. Simon as well. But where are you guys at doubles-wise? Are you still trying to figure out pairings, and how will you you know massage that throughout the year until you find what works? Yeah, I think, I think we're still trying to look at it, right? Because, again, those guys haven't been here this semester, so um... – we're still contemplating that. We've got some thoughts in our mind. We'll 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 do some things in early January, and um, you know we know we have a really good group of guys that have a very good skill set, um, and so that they, they sort of know our system of doubles and what we try to and what we believe in. Since we're returning everybody except for Rinky, and and uh, we've tried to teach some of that to him this fall. So again, uh, we're still you know we're still working through that, and that'll be early January. We'll make all those decisions. Well, let me just say, I swear, I think you could play me with Will, and like we'd be able to field a decent three doubles response, <laughs> just because Will's that good. I mean, the guy, as good as he is in singles, you could argue he could be the most underrated doubles player in the country, just watching him. and He owns the net. It's so impressive. But you talk about 
teaching Rinky the system. I'm curious in general because you guys have had a lot of success in doubles over the past, you know, five, ten years. And, you know, individual talent certainly helps. But you have guys like Brett Clark and Rob Kelly reaching, you know, top five in the country. And, you know, neither of them were playing number one singles. So that is a testament to your system and your plays working. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about why you think you guys have had double success and also how important doubles and that doubles point is to the dual match season? You know, it certainly helps when you play a top, you know, 20 team, right, or any team at <laughs> sure. that first point and then move forward. You know, my associate head coach, Trip Phillips, you know, um, he's a great teacher, um, period, singles and doubles. And then he uh, he actually brought up, you know, a lot of experience from the tour when he came here 13 years ago. And, um, you know, we certainly work a lot on returns, work a lot on serving placement. Like work a lot on our positioning on the court where we're going to be and we'll do this, some of those drills almost every day so again and in Tripp's teaching and, and how he sees the court you know Tripp was a semifinalist at the U.S. Open so um, he has a tremendous amount of experience of what he did on the tour and so I think that sort of correlates to what you know we've tried to teach our guys in doubles and obviously you know it's hard to believe you know but as Will's going into his senior year and you talk about what a great player he is I mean he's a six-time All-American you know, going into his senior year, you know, singles and doubles every single year. So he's just been an incredible performer. And so, uh, you know, we've been so fortunate to have him. Again, Coach, you and him at three doubles. I'd watch that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I would just sit in the chair. You know, I would just, I would just, I'd, I'd put my server in the court and say, "Will you got the entire court?" I'd, let him serve. I'd just move off the court. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm all in. I do want to ask on a personal note. Um, and again, I, it, maybe it's because I was raised this way. I had a coach who demanded this out of us. But are you a servant volleyer in doubles? You think that's the way it's got to be played? No, I, I, you know, again, that's been an adjustment. You know, I think um, the game's changed um, quite a bit. We certainly try to do serve and volley, and we work on that a lot. But we don't, you know, um, we'll try to use the skills where the guys feel a little bit more comfortable. But I would say we lean towards having a guy serve and volley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I it it's it depends, right? Because these guys are blast in return. So, like, you don't want to hit first volleys at your feet. But there is something to the idea of just moving on the court, feel, you know, imposing yourself, keeping them off balance. Even if you're getting passed down the line, that's just part of doubles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's You know, it's again, I'm not a, you know, the six-game set. You know, I don't really – I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest with you. I'd even – you know, I liked it when it was a little bit longer when you had an eight-game set, and you know, eight-game pro set because you could make some adjustments in the doubles. Now it can happen so fast, and some blink of an eye it can be over before you know it. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I think that's affected the play and people just working on their skills quite as much. Uh, you know, I don't know if um, it would be interesting to see, like, you know, obviously the United States produced the Bryan brothers, which was incredible, um, and I think collegiate tennis is, imp- and, you know, uh, has produced some really great professional tennis players that played collegiate tennis and went on to have great pro careers. But um, I hope this doesn't affect, uh, you know, their play in the future as they move yeah. forward. Yeah, I, I think that, the no-ad scoring as well, obviously that was a sticking point. Have you adjusted to no-ad? Yeah, I've gotten used to it. Again, you know, when I first came here to North Carolina, you know, we'd play um, singles first, two out of three, and then we'd play doubles two out of three. So, um you know, and I'm certainly an advocate of the more that you play and that you're on the court, the the better you're going to be. You know, I think that if you look at the professional tour, I mean, they're, you know, for the, certainly all the Grand Slams are playing three out of five, regular scoring, um, you know, and the same thing with the doubles. Sometimes, of course, they've shortened the format in doubles now in the pro career. A lot of these guys are, you know, just living by a 10-point tiebreaker. So, but yeah, I've, I've gotten adjusted to it. You know, times change and uh, it's pretty exciting now. What, uh, I think, you know, what's happening in collegiate tennis. Oh, I had a coach back in there. He'd go, Alex, do you know what it's like to have to play Paul Harhoos in doubles after you just played him best of three in singles? And I'm like, no, I, I really don't. He's like, well, it's terrible. And I get the whole story <laughs> and it's just like, and a buff faro. And I'm like, all right, all right, enough, enough, enough. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that it's obviously an adjustment, and I think it, it's made for a fun product, and you see the energy on deuce points that these teams produce in doubles because they're all playing next to each other. You win a deuce point on one court, and it really can affect the momentum on another court. And 
I don't know. To me, that that's sort of half the fun. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think it's good for the again. You know, it's good for the fans. The matches don't last as long. You know, and I think we have maybe possibly fans staying a little bit longer for the entire match now. So it's been good on that on that side of it. My counter is I went down to a match in Chapel Hill, NCAA's. This was my sophomore year, so 2015. Uh, I think you guys were hosting Tulane, and you beat them. And I would sit in that Chapel Hill afternoon just watching you guys play. That was, you know, it was long format, and it was lovely. Uh, So I I could see the appeal of a longer match. But, you know, for your program in particular, before you have any NCAA uh, goals, before you get to any of that, you have to go through the ACC conference. And obviously the past seven years, it's been so much Virginia, so much Wake Forest, so much you guys. The ACC has really uh, showed its strength as a tennis conference. And I'm curious, because you've been a part of that rise. You watched the Virginia program grow into what it became during the 2010s. Obviously, you guys, Wake Forest, have had so much success as of late as well. You win that national indoor title in, uh, I believe it was 2016 for you guys. Um, what do you think is, why has the ACC been so successful? What is a test, you know, why have multiple teams from that conference, have we seen them push forward? And then how helpful is it for your team to get to compete in a conference like that? Um, well, I think it's, you know, great institutions and great coaches, you know, um, we've got some great coaches in our league, some great young coaches in our league, you know, Kyle Smith from NC State, um, you know, he's doing a fantastic job. I think he's starting his third year now. And then um, you know, I'll just start talking about the guys that are really close to us. You know, Ramsey had a fantastic recruiting year, and he's got a number of, um, you know, really, really good, solid freshmen that are there this year. So they're going to be on the rise. And then Alosha at, at um, Miami, you know, Florida State's always good. I mean, it's just you can go down the league and just list that, you know, everybody's pushing everybody to get better. And I think everybody knows that to survive in our league, You've got to be good, you know. I think Notre Dame's got the best team they've had, um, you know, in a long time uh, this year. And you look at their results that they've had, and they're and if they stay healthy, so it just goes on and on. Virginia Tech, Jim Thompson, you know, has done a tremendous job, and so um, it's just the entire league is very, very strong, you know. And you've got to come on game day to play, you know. So. Um, you know, young coaches and great institutions that help recruit, you know, student athletes. So, yeah. And I know Wake Forest got you guys a couple times last year. Obviously, you ended Virginia's ACC win streak in Charlottesville at the National Indoors. Um, really random fact. I grew up a UVA tennis fan just because they were really good when I was started following it. So that one hurt me personally. Although Jack getting the clinch, that helped. You know, that yep. helped. I was like, I like that. Um, but again to to have these schools to play against them how beneficial is that for your team in season you know if you you know if you can win the conference you must be pretty damn good oh yeah oh yeah if you win the conference you, mean, you know you, you think you're going to have a chance even now i mean i think if you finish top four in our conference you know you've got a five or six really you got a chance to win a national championship um so i think i think you know what is it two years ago the year we made the finals you know virginia finished one Wake was two and we were three. So, um, you, you know, I mean, you have to, if you win a conference, I mean, you're, you're playing at the top level in the, in the country. So, um, yep. And is that where you expect you, your team to compete this year at the top of the conference? Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we got to stay healthy. We got to keep working. We got to keep getting better. Um, but that certainly is one of our main goals. And I, I think it's going to be a really fun team to watch. I do want to be conscious of your time, but I have to ask you about two quick things from the past because I just brought that up. That win, uh, 2016 National Indoor Charlottesville. Not only is it the first national indoor title for your program history, but you guys end that ACC streak. You have a team in, you know, Braden, Ronnie, Jack. That was a class that obviously meant so much to UNC. But reflecting back on that moment, on that win, um, you know, how does a moment like that happen for a program and you know what does that mean to you as you look back at it i mean it's interesting you asked that question because i sort of thought about that i certainly think about it even uh, more so now with jack you know now as our volunteer uh jack murray so i mean by the way he's, we're so happy that he's here and he did a tremendous job for us this fall so um you know those what a great team and a great a, a very unselfish team they were great players but they cared so much about the team and then obviously 
you know, when you look back and you see now that Braden's ranked top 100 in the world, he's 93 in the world, um, and he was leading the group, you know, that um, certainly helped quite a bit, right? And then you had, you know, Ronnie's leadership and Ronnie's play, and it's the whole group, Brett Clark. It was a special moment, you know, so um, that was a lot of fun. You know, I think it was more exciting, you know, for us to win a national championship. Um, obviously, you know, we didn't talk a lot about breaking Virginia streak or something like that. You know, they, we knew they had a great program or whatever, just, but, but for those guys to have a national title, that'll be with them forever. So yeah. That was just a really, uh, it's, you know, uh, uh, it's fun to look back on that and you look at all the, and you look at the team and, and one, they were unselfish too. They were very talented and three, they worked very hard. And, um, uh, so that was just, it was, it was an honor to coach. Them. Well, on the Braden Schnur and he was kind enough to come on our Cracked Interviews podcast a few months ago, but I would argue he's 10 to 15 pounds lighter now. I mean, I I, I saw Braden in college, and, he, you know, there's a little more junk in the trunk back then. Um, yeah, I think, I think he, you know, he's, I, you know, I, I think that's why, you know, one, we're so excited for him mm-hmm. is that, uh, you know, he's professional now. I think he has, he has more, um, he learned some things in college, and, and he's taken that on the tour and uh with him and um you know for him to you know be at top 100 in the world it's going to be an exciting year for him and, and obviously his expectations for himself were to go higher and higher so it's just fun just to watch him. yeah and he talked about you know how valuable all the things he learned how he was able to mature at unc i remember though from that match I don't know how, you know, Ryan Shane and Braden Schnur don't just break the balls they're using. Like, those guys were hitting so hard in that match. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a big level. You know? But I think, I mean, look back. I mean, look at the – I mean, I don't, was Aragon on that team? I'm trying, Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. on that team, too. I mean, look at the success that, you know, a lot of those guys have had on the tour. So, it was just top tennis all the way up and down the line. Yeah, it was incredible tennis, and obviously you guys reached number one in the country that year. Uh, only the next year to you know surpass that and make your first NCAA final. This is was all a setup, all the complimenting of Braden Schnur to ask, and I'm sure you you don't do this. I'm I understand if you, your answer isn't what I'm expecting, but you guys have Braden Schnur the next year. Let's say he stays for that senior year. You get to bring back him, Ronnie, uh, Jack. You have Will into that lineup as well. Rob, Kelly in that lineup. Does that team win the title? Um, well, they certainly would have been there. <laughs> 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 it would have been really close. You know, again, you got to stay healthy. Everything has got to go your way. Um, and you've got to be fortunate as you keep moving through the tournament. But, uh, you know, you put Braden on that team, it certainly loads the odds a lot in our favor. Yeah, oh, that would have been fun, especially because that team, what, was it 4-3 over Wake Forest, Bo clinches, and then indoors, you guys beat Georgia as well in a late-night thriller, because to to have that run the next year, you lose Braden, but you get a guy like Will. I mean, that that's the, a testament to a healthy culture, right? Oh, yeah. Um, what a, um, absolutely. You know, so I think that, um, that's what, I mean, that's why how it's, you know, recruiting is extremely important to, you want to get the right culture to get the right person that fits into your program and obviously someone that's very talented yeah absolutely and i i want to ask on a personal for you i know you have trip as your assistant but now you mentioned jack as the volunteer ronnie's at indiana uh have you ever felt older than right now coach oh. <laughs> <laughs> this moment right now um, no. <laughs> um <laughs> i'm just gonna laugh um I feel older, uh, maybe a little bit, but I, but certainly, um, not in spirit, you know, or heart. You know, <laughs> very young. I, that's probably the best way to put it, you know, cause these guys keep you young. It's so fun to be around them. Um, but again, it's hard, you know, it's again, there's four years go by fast, you know, um, I was talking to some players that, um, it's hard for me to believe I'm going to year 31 or 30, something like that. And then, um, to look back, I still remember, you know, some of the guys are still some of my best friends, you know, Joe Frierson, who runs our Carolina tennis circle, our fundraising group. You know, I knew I've known him 30 years now. It's hard to believe. I still remember our practices that we had together. Yeah. It's a testament. And it's not just the men's team, right? I, you could argue as much talent as you guys bring back. I mean, the women's team has what three of the top 10 players in the country right now. UNC tennis as a whole is thriving. Yeah, I think um, that, you know, we're really proud of that. You know, we, we sort of talk about Carolina tennis, you know, we think we're really a family. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate, too, that we, I get to work alongside Coach Calvis. You know, we've had a great relationship through 15 years. And then, uh, 
he's been amazing and amazing the job that he's done with his team, you know, and then again, like you said, they got three of the top 10 players and, uh, you know, their depth, you know, um, we're looking forward to watching them play this year. Oh, absolutely. When Jamie Loeb got that title, were you like, well, you, you got to match this for me. It's a competition. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're so happy for Jamie. You know? <laughs> happy for all of our guys, you know, but I mean, I mean, all of our players, both male and female, but, uh, Certainly, there's a lot of motivation for us to try to match our women's program, no doubt about that. Absolutely, and we will end on this note then. I know expectations is an overused word because in college tennis, it's such a long season. As you mentioned, health and all of these different things have to go right for you to succeed. But I guess I'll phrase it like this. If for college tennis fans who are following your UNC Tar Heel team this year, um, what do you, you know, fans who may come to the matches, what do you want them to take uh, away from watching your Tar Heels play, and ultimately, you know, what are you hoping for from this season? Yeah, I think, um, you know, again, I think that one thing is we want to make sure that we do everything we possibly can do that we can control and compete every single day, um, you know, and get better. And then the chips are going to fall where they fall, right? So we take every day as, you know, this is the day to train, this is the day to get better. And, um, and, and hopefully that some of these players, you know, a lot of our players, actually have aspirations to go on and play professional tennis once they leave. So hopefully they're setting those habits right now, you know, as they're learning and that will, they will take those with them when they leave. And so again, but it's a great group of young men, you know, it's an honor to coach them. Um, last year, you know, our grade point average for the spring was a 3.4 for our entire team. So these guys are getting it done, not only on the court, but also in the, in the classroom. So, um, you know, it's an honor to be with them every day. So, again, you're, you're coming out and watching, you know, I think, you know, a great group of young men that love playing collegiate tennis. They're extremely talented. And, um, you know, they're doing it the right way. So, you know, it's just, again, come watch us play. And then I think if you, you do come watch us play, you know, our fan base has gotten better and better every single year. I think we've worked, we're getting about maybe for the bigger matches, 500 to 800 people that have come and watch us play. So we're really excited about that. No, absolutely. Again, I've been there. It's such a fun environment uh, to watch your team play in Chicago as well. I mean, have the success you've had in your postseason runs over these past, as I mentioned, five to seven years. It's a testament to the program you built. Um, I'm going to throw in a bonus question. What's more enjoyable, having Jack Murray as a player to coach or having him as a volunteer to direct? (laughs) I'm going to say as a player to coach right now. (laughs) Um, Jack was pretty amazing, you know, like – um, you know, he's been working out the guys and, and, and he just doesn't miss a ball. I mean, like, you know, and then, um, he was one of our greatest ever, you know, and, and then, um, uh, you know, the one thing that Jack had an incredible work ethic and, um, you know, for him to be back here now and to inspire our guys and to give that back to our guys, you know, and, and I think that's one reason that he was a great player for us because of his work ethic and his dedica- dedication to the best, to be the best he could be. So that's just great to have our young guys or our entire team to be around that every single day. So I'll put, I'll say more fun to watch Jack compete and play, but uh, he's growing on me as a coach. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Well, Coach, again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Happy Thanksgiving to you and you know your entire Tar Heel family as well as your personal family. Uh, good luck this season as you guys get ready for the dual match. And anytime you want to come on the Cracked Interview Podcast, we would love to have you. Well, thank you, Alex. Thank you for your time. Let me ask you a question real quick. Oh, Who's going to win that football game this weekend? Of your, uh, <laughs> your any predictions on that one? Well, I will because this is on the record. I'll say Michigan, but I'll say this: Ohio State's fast. I mean, they're really, really fast. And Shea Patterson is. It, I need a snowy day. I need rain. I need ugliness. I need it to be a low-scoring affair because if they're running crossing routes on us like last year, we're in trouble. Where are they playing this year? It's at the Big House. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And look, yeah. nine so and two. Watching. Yeah. Listen, nine thanks for all you do for college tennis. I think it's fantastic, and, and tennis in general. And, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Oh, I appreciate that. Can I get a prediction from you? Michigan, Ohio State, you're going to roll with my blue, or are you going to take oh, the Buckeyes? Oh, I don't know, man. I'm going to take the fifth on that one, you know? <laughs> huh? I'm going to take the fifth. I'm gonna, you know, um, um, this is going to be a good one. I'm going to take the fifth on that one. I know Ohio State's pretty good, though, but still, I don't know, Michigan's – you know, it's, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I appreciate it, Coach. Well, can I get a Go Heels from you before we oh, go? Oh, you got it, man. Go Heels. Oh, of course. Take care, Coach. Okay, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye.